Good afternoon and welcome to the Shea Stadium for today's Betfred Championship Round 23 clash between the AB Sundex 1895 Cup winners returning home, Halifax Panthers and the Witness Vikings. Just one point separating the two sides in the table. Halifax on in seventh place on 23 points and Witness in eighth on 22 points. Both were in the mix in the chase the all important playoff places at the end of the season let's go through the teams first and foremost the Panthers some forced changes because of the HIA fail protocol James Woodburn all and, and um, Jake Mason with Joe Keyes feeling like a brand new signing coming to the side so we line up the Panthers number 18 Brandon Pickersgill They're on the wings number 2 Lachlan Wormsley number 5 James Salton Stahl at centre, the Castleford Loney, Alex Sutcliffe moves across to the centres from his usual back row berth and Ben Crooks wears 35. Half-backs back to the old six and seven of Louis Jufre and Joe Keyes. Front row for Halifax, number 16, Will Calcott. Number nine, Brandon Moore and 10, Dan Murray. It's 11, 12 and 13. Once again, Ben Cavanagh, Matty G and Jacob Fairbank on the bench for the Panthers. Number 34, Adam O'Brien. Number eight, Adam Tangatar, who makes his 200th career appearance once he gets out on the field. Number 19, Ryan Lannan. And number three, Zach McComb. Ben Tibbs is 18th man, wearing four. And the Witness Vikings, they line up. Number one, Jack Owens at fullback. Number two, Ryan Inson. Five, Kieran Dixon on the wings. And in the centre is Matthew Fleming and Joe Edge. It's an ex Halifax halfback lineup of Danny Craven, who spent part of 2015 on loan. And then number seven, Tom Gilmore, who spent the first couple of months in the ill-fated 2020 season at Halifax. He wears seven. Front row for the Vikings, number eight, Owen Farnworth. Number nine, Matty Fozard. And number 16, Callum Field. Second row, number 11, Sam Wilde. And number 17, an ex-Halifax legend in Shane Grady. And number 22, Aaron Brown locks the scrum for the Vikings. On the bench for winners, number 19, Oliver Davies, number 26, Max Roberts, number 31, Tom Farber, and number 32, Tom Worthington. And Joe Lyons, number 18, is the 18th man today for witness. Their coach by Neil Belshaw in interim charge until the end of the season after the Vikings parted company with John Keir. That's it, he's the homecoming for the 1895 Cup winners after that loss against London Broncos at Wimbledon last week Simon Griggs described this as a and every other game of the season as a grand final but this one especially a must win one point separating the table it's an absolute blockbuster which will be coming up here here come the teams. The pyrotechnics are up. The drums in the south stand. And everyone's ready for this must win clash for the Panthers. We've had really good home form this season. Only losing in the league to the Bradford Bulls. Can we build on that terrific victory over the Featherstone Rovers a couple of weeks ago? And this Bank Audi weekend at the Shea. Referee Cameron Worsley blows his whistle after the pre-match rituals. And here we go. The Vikings in all black with pink trim on the shoulders and Halifax back in blue and white. They'll be attacking from left to right towards the north stand 
but hopefully loud and raucous south stand at the backs in this half will be Tom Gilmore sorry Jack Owens it will be to get us underway kicks the ball it's lofted in our centre and Brandon Pickers underneath takes it well hands on to Calcott and Calcott winds up well put down by two witness defenders two afraid don't we half one ball out to the near enough new signing Joe Keyes out since that Challenge Cup defeat against the Saints so um, what a welcome boost it is to have him back especially with James Woodburn all sitting out under the head injury protocols Jufre short ball to G but great tackle there coming in from the Windless Vikings Fairbank takes it to the line a chance three Vikings defenders who put him down five metres into their own half last tackle here for Fax Moore finds Keys and Keys first kick of the game puts it high no real pressure on the chase there and Ryan Ince easy enough for the winger who gets put down just outside his own 20 as a south stand raw to get into and that's exactly what they do with Matty G putting the Vikings man down in the shape of Jack Owens here's Kieran Dixon the mercurial Kieran Dixon he's all rocks and diamonds he's either brilliant or the total opposite Fozard jumps out from dummy half and it all I think that is to Callum Field there as the Vikings enter Panthers territory Fozard onto farm with flat ball calls a forward pass out there but doesn't matter because Dan Murray with a great tackle there last tackle here for the, for the Vikings as Craven puts boot to ball pulls it high Pickersgill waits takes it well no real pressure on the brand Pickersgill but those are sometimes the balls that get dropped here Saltonstall hands it on to Wormsley Wormsley <laughs> I don't think he'll thank him for giving him that ball there a bit of an hospital ball and three winless Vikings plowing into the turf and the ball's come loose and it's a knock on as well and Halifax not great play in their own 20 metres here gifting winless a great chance to put points on the board here They'll get the scrum down 15 metres out from the Halifax line. First real attacking chance for both sides. For either side here. Fozard does half of the scrum hands on the crib and short ball to Joe Edge. But well dealt with there by Ben Crooks. But the Vikings have six tackles on this Halifax line. Farmworth charges in. Takes a four Halifax men to stop his progress. He eventually put him on his back. Fozard waits a dummy half. Finds Craven, short ball there, calls a forward pass. It did look flat at best. But I fast defence wise to it. Fozard out of Gilmore. Gilmore love the ball out there, and the Vikings are going to be in here. Ryan Ince has scored the first try of the afternoon. And the poor choices with ball in hand in Halifax of 20 have come to roost here. As Ryan Ince. After just over three minutes here, gets the first try of the afternoon, it goes the way of the Witness Vikings. And the four all up with the kick to come. Not the start. Simon Griggs always plays where I wanted. Well finished off in the corner by the winger. They're leaving Kieran Dixon a tricky chance to convert but he is a really accomplished goal kicker is Dixon and what is the inquest going to be behind those posts there's not much talking going on I think they've said the piece I think it's fairly obvious what they need to do just look after the ball better there's Dixon with his unusual pre-kick ritual it's like the saying goes, you can do what you want before you kick the ball, as long as the ball goes through the post, that's the main thing. But it is one of the 
more unusual routines you'll see. Dixon puts it high, but you'll hear from the groans of the crowd that he's put that ball wide. So the score remains after the first five minutes here at the Shea Stadium, Halifax Panthers nil, Witness Vikings four. As Joe Keys, it'll be to get us back underway from the kickoff. And Keys puts it deep towards that left corner, taken by the try scorer Ince. He runs into a three man welcoming committee of Will Calcott, Dan Murray, and Ben Kavanagh. Here's Shane Gray, the ex Halifax man. Never a backward step taken from him. But he's put down by his ex-teammate Jacob Fairbank as Winders shift it early. Onto this near side, but well dealt with by Luis Ufre and Ben Crooks there. Sends the danger and Sam Weil was put down. Here's Dixon. Goes back blind. Great step there from Edge. He's still going. Somehow he's managed to avoid G on the floor and he's still going. Joe Edge, what a run. Oh, if I didn't put him down, he's unbelievable. But Winders getting a, a quick play of the ball and Farmworth. Meets Crooks head on. He's put down. Just under the 30 metre line. Last tackle here for Witness. Craven puts it high. Well taken by Pickers Gill, but he's met straight away by Kieran Dixon. Halifax need a much better exit set here. Salt and Stall. Learn from his mistake. Keeps all from the ball this time. But this Witness defence. Very eager. G close to the rook. Next from Yas forward, but it's punishing defence this from the Witness Vikings in Matty Fozard and Sam Wilde. Short ball from Calcon's Keys, calls and forward passes. You can hear from the Witness players, but not given by the referee. Halifax go early. Here's Kavanagh. Calls an eye tackle, not either by the referee. It's last tackle here for the Panthers and Keys. Spirals that bum up. The ball's going to bounce. It's going to be a kind bounce for the witness players as Craven mops up. And Keyes chases his own kick well, helped out by Dan Murray. And the Vikings will start the set just outside their own 20. Here's into the try scorer. Tries to bounce off the tackle of Alex Sutcliffe, but the Casford Loney does well. Here's Matt Fleming. Past the 40, Fozard finds Owens into the line from fullback. Good yards made by the fullback there. Put down by Calcott and G. Here's Aaron Brown, the loose forward. Finding Halifax 30. Here comes the last tackle for Widness. Fozard onto Craven once more, and Craven puts it high towards the corner again. This time it's Salt and Stall underneath, and Salt and Stall does well. But yet again, the witness defence timed the challenge perfectly. Here's Crooks. Big defence there coming in from Owen Farmworth. As the fans in the south stand rally behind the side. Great run there in close to the rough and salt and stall, but the witness defence wise to it. Here's G running across field. Takes his tackle on the 30. Centre field, options left and right here for Halifax. Goes right, right to Fairbank, go to Jufre, long ball out to Salt and Stall, Salt and Stall's got space here. Will he take on edge? He does. But Joe Edge does well, it's last tackle here for Halifax. Inside the witness 40, it's Jufre, puts it wide to Keys and Keys puts it towards the corner, too deep for the chasers, but it's perfectly placed. So that Ince has to take and carry up field, but that's an Eason. Defensive effort from Sutcliffe and Kavanagh. Here's Grady again. Well put down there by Fairbank once more. I don't think it'll be the last time I say that today. Owen stores a dummy, spies a gap, but well defended there from Murray. Witness looking dangerous when they shift it wide and they get the first six again of the game as well, the Vikings. Fuzz out at dummy half. Finds Dixon, Dixon spies a gap behind the rook, but 
Well closed down by Murray once more, but it's a quick play of the ball. No markers and Fozard has a free run. He's put down by his opposite number, Brandon Moore. Gilmore in at dummy half, finds Farnworth, Farnworth. Throws some footwork, but got defence so about the offload, but Matty G did well to wrap the ball up. As a witness, side inside Halifax's 20, Gilmore. Short ball. Halifax defence wise to it. Last tackle here, witness go blind. Gilmore again, and out there in again. The same move, yeah, again. The same try scorer, and witness double the lead. Just after the 10 minute mark. And it's just deja vu here, Gilmore. Finds Fleming, on to wins. And it's just too easy for the witness side here. As the number two Ryan's gets his gets try number two of the day. So times the lead by two. With eight nil to witness with a kick to come. And a horror start here for the Panthers. Looking to maybe exact some sort of revenge for the hiding that Witness gave us early on the season over at the Holton Stadium. As Dixon once more goes through his routine. He won't be rushed. do his little hop skip and a jump as he's got his radar working from the last kick he hasn't and that's the only really saving grace from this first 12 minutes how the tries have been forced out wide so there's no conversion so it's still only 8-0 to the Vikings Keys kicks off, go deep and left again, Ince. Hands it on, it's a great defensive effort there. On Callum Field, I think it was. Here's Grady, targeting his smaller ex-teammate this time in Brandon Moore. But Moore, always up to the challenge. Here's Craven, onto Wild, Wild, trying to find some joy this near side, but Louis Euphray does well. Here's Joe Edge, coming into the middle, away from the edge. He's put down on the 40 by Fairbank. Here's Brown. Aaron Brown spins out the tackle. Nearly got the offload away and Widness are just finding yards far too easily so far. As Gilmore puts it high and deep, no chases, but Pickersgill takes it well, but Widness, wall of black. Coming into the Halifax 10 metre area as Warnsley takes the ball up. Three witness defenders put him down. Slow play of the ball. Dufre finds Solstall close to the rook. Short ball to Crooks and Crooks through the gap ball. Well held on there by Wilde. Had to be. Is that the small bit of impotence that Halifax needed? Calcott takes it up. Spins the tackle looking for the offload, but Farnworth. Sticks all to him. Slow play the ball once more. Moore finds Keys, going back inside, finds Fairbank. Tries to push the challenge of Moore, gets the offload to Moore. Moore steps inside. Still going, Brandon Moore. Does option out here if he wanted it, but he decides to keep all. Last tackle here for Halifax. As Keys pulls it to the corner, looking for Lack on Walls to chase, but the kick's gonna be too deep. And Ryan Ince collects. That's a decent chase from Halifax. If they can keep him there, just about. Winners do look dangerous when they shift this ball. Two Frey and Crooks put Edge down. Ince again coming in for his win, looking for work. Put down downstairs 
by Crooks upstairs by Murray. And Field takes it further on. Early kick in the tackle count from Craven. Game management there. Trying to keep Halifax down in their own quarters. Walmsley. Runs it straight and hard into that defence. And Halifax will start. It's there. And it's the six again. First one for Halifax, but it's on the zero tackle, so it matters not really. The corner offside on this near side, and everything's doing there. He definitely listened to the crowd there, the referee. But we'll take it. You can see him pointing at the witness player saying, stay on side, but they didn't listen. There's keys for the rather conservative. Kick to touch, only making 10 or so metres. It's Calcott inside Jufre onto Murray. Murray spins the tackle. They'll start the set off. Just over the 30 metre line. They go left. Keys back on the inside to Pickersgill. Pickersgill runs across field, finds Dufre. Dufre, long ball out to Saltonstall. The space out of the Saltonstall, he's dropped the ball. How many times an Halifax player dropped the ball against the witness Vikings with no one round him on this ground? Just about summing up our performance in this first quarter of an hour or so. Dixon runs out from Dummy R, finds Edge. Put down by G just over the halfway line. Dixon again from Dummy Half. Finds Owens and Owens finds the 40. Just making the ass far too easily, this witness Viking side. Brown throws a dummy, but Calcott doesn't buy it. Fuzzard goes right to Gilmore, back on the inside, loose ball as Brown picks it up and he's given a forward pass as the referee. And that's a let off for Halifax because Witness looking dangerous there. As the sun comes out here this year, it's been a, a day of four, four seasons here in West Yorkshire. Sun, wind, rain. But the sun's out. For how long, we don't know. It's Fairbank, short ball to Murray. He meets three witness defenders who put him down, just shy of his own 30. Moore finds Fairbank, out of the back to Keys, further on to Pickersgill. Pickersgill takes on himself. He gets put down on the 40. Walmsley goes himself and dummy half. Thought he saw a gap, but he makes some good yards, takes him over halfway. Wanting a quick play of the ball, but Matty Fossard's all over him. It's a six again. Once more for Halifax. As Fairbank will just settle us down. Another good opportunity here for Halifax to strike. More long ball to Keys. Keys. Out of the back to Jufre. Jufre on further on. It hits. Still Cliff in the head and he goes forward. Onto Fleming. Fleming steps salt and salt far too easily. And Jufre. Jufre does really well to get back, but Halifax just look like a team they've never played together at the moment. Here's Owens going against all his teammates there. They were lined up on this left hand side, but maybe it's giving them a bit more space to attack. Gilmore in at dummy half. Brown short ball to Farmworth and Farmworth. A three Halifax men waiting for him. More downstairs. Fairbank and G up top. Slowing the play of the ball down. It's another six again to witness this time. Gilmore finds Craven. Craven well put down there. By Sutcliffe. The witness have another six tackles on his Halifax line. Farmworth looking to twist his way over the line, but the door is closed for now. Witness have got men over here, they can use it. Owens gibbles the ball through, and Matty G does really well. Another big let off there for Halifax. The wrong option taken by the witness side there. As Crooks. Runs inside, that's a better run from Ben Crooks. He's still going, Ben Crooks. What a run there from Ben, still going, Ben Crooks. Shifting the ball from right to left hand, fending away, brilliant relieving run from Ben Crooks. Sutton no Marcus here, so he goes himself. Finds Sutcliffe, 
Great tackle down low by Fleming. This is much more like Halifax. And the south stand. Responding kind as Saltonstall throws a great little dummy. Pass it to himself. Moore finds Calcott. Out of the back to Keys. Keys. There's no one in that corner. Dribbles it through. Looking for Wormsley. Ince dives on it. This is better from Halifax. This is much more like what we're used to. As Owen runs across field, spinning out of tackles, left, right, and centre. Eventually put down by Dufrey, who's done really well defensively so far in this first 20 minutes. Edge goes from dummy half far too easily. Craving at dummy half onto Dixon. Dixon stepping across the line, but Fairbank does well. Held out by Murray and Dufresne to slow the, this play the ball down here's Oliver Davies fresh onto the field and last tackle here for Witness Halifax good defensive set there Fozard trademark kick from dummy half it's a brilliant one as well forcing Wormsley all the way back there hands on to Pickersgill Halifax looking to shift it this time what a brilliant tackle there from Danny Craven on Pickersgill. Here's Wormsley, keeps hold this time. Throws a dummy ball Oliver the Davies. Wise to it. He gets put down just outside his 20. As Simon Griggs brings the changes, here's one of them, Ryan Lannan. Fresh on the field, Adam Tangatar on for his 200th career appearance. On for Will Calcott and Dan Murray. Here's Keys onto Kavanagh. Lovely ball out to Suckley. Suckley's away. Breaks off field. But he had no support. He's put down five metres into the Vikings half. Here's Tangatar against his former club. Throws a dummy. Last sack lay for Halifax. They line up on this near right hand side. Jufre puts it high. Looking for Crooks and Salt and Stall to chase. Dixon goes up, knocks it on. Crooks kicks into the in goal. And he gets it and scores! Ben Crooks scores! What an opportunistic moment there for the Panthers as Ben Crooks. After 23 minutes here at the Shea, brings Halifax right back into this game. All the kicking game has been towards that left hand side so far. The broads this near side, Jufre. Put it high, and I said before, Kieran Dixon is rocks and diamonds. This time it was rocks. Great pressure from James Saltonstall. With a Saltonstall knocked it back, or Dixon knocked it forward. It doesn't really matter because Crooks kicked it forward. Soccer style. Then into the in goal where I think it was Danny Craven just seemed to leave it. And Crooks just pounced on it. To bring Halifax right back into this game. Eight points to four with a kick to come and Louis Jufre, the way he's been kicking recently, you'd certainly back him to land this. Ten metres in from touch on this near side. Jufre strikes it well, straight through the post. Jufre off the mark in this game, and Halifax are right back in it. We're just over a quarter of an hour to go in this first half. After an awful start to this game, Halifax have worked their way back. And the scoreline, just coming up to the last quarter of an hour, is Halifax Panthers six, winless Vikings eight. As a referee, just before we get the game underway, he's having a quick chat with Jack Owens, I'm not too sure why. It certainly got the South Stand singing. Owens, once more, lost the kick in the middle, taken by Pickersgill, onto Lannan and Lannan. 
does well, breaks our tackle in. This is what we're used to seeing, Lion Lannan. Players on his back still making yards. Moore finds you for a short ball to G and G. Spins the tackle, but the Vikings defense do well. Sam Wilde puts him down the 30. Crooks, one ball to Jufre. Halifax looking to shift it early. Keys, rise the tackle of Fleming. He's still going, he's not held yet, he is now. Had a slight opportunity to offload it there. Which quick play the ball though. Kavanagh goes on that left edge. He's put down just over the 40. Sutcliffe, that dummy half, onto Keys, onto Tangata and Tangata. Up towards halfway, last tackle here for the Panthers. Keys brings it back to Jufre. Jufre spies broken field. Love the play by Lou Jufre. Puts it high now. Forcing always to come forward. And Ryan Lannan with a perfectly timed tackle there. But Halifax uh, pulled back for offside. It's actually Witnesses' first penalty of the game. And he's right. Ryan Lannan was in front of Louis Jufre. Wasn't one ten metres. Correct decision there from the referee Cameron Worsley. And Danny Craven boots the ball to touch. Great touch finder. And Winness will start off this set. 15 metres into Halifax and half. Here's Craven. Wide to Gilmore, short ball to Davies, steps out of challenge of Kavanagh, but he's met by Fairbank. Helped out by Moore and Lannan. Fozard goes short to Gilmore, onto Grady. Calls a forward pass, but that was absolutely fine. Grady plays the ball to Fozard. Gilmore stretched, nearly dropped the ball onto Davies, and Davies met well by Fairbank and Tangata. As Winder stack it towards his near left hand side. That look for forward pass that did. Referee not giving it. Here's Brown. Throws a dummy onto Gilmore. Gilmore. And once again, it's the same move again. It's deja vu once more. And Ryan Ince has scored a first star of that trick. And every time Witness seemed to throw it out to that right hand side. They seem to score. And Ryan Ince has scored a, an hat trick within 27 minutes here to put the, the Vikings further in front. To give him that two score cushion once again. And perhaps crucially, Ince has managed to ground the ball 15 metres in from touch to give Kieran Dixon. Perhaps a more achievable conversion this time. But I don't know what's going on that Halifax left edge. Every single time witness it seems have, have gone to that right edge, they just they seem to have an extra man. As Adam O'Brien is gonna come onto the field. Not too sure who for just yet. As Dixon. Goes through his routine once more. And he gets it this time. It's the Windows fans you can hear cheering behind that. Behind that south stand. And we're just over 10 minutes to go. It's Halifax Panthers 6, Witness Vikings 14. It's Keys kicks off once more and once more goes, goes left. Not as deep this time and it's... You probably can't believe his luck. Takes his tackle. And it's Fairbank who's come off the pitch for Adam O'Brien. Well, that's an unusual move. Fairbank usually plays a big chunk of minutes in the game. But that'll move Brandon Moore to loose forward and Adam O'Brien into hooker. But it's witness on the attack now was Craven. Finds Wild. 
Use footwork at the defence, but Lannan and Crooks, wise to it. Helped out by G. Craven runs across field, drops on to Davies, and Davies takes on Tangata, well put down there, just shy of the halfway line. Last tackle here for the Vikings. Fozard from dummy half, onto Craven, reaches it free again, and Craven puts it high and really deep. That's going to be too far as Pickersgill diffuses the bomb really well. And it's going to be a seven tackle set here for Halifax and Pickersgill wastes no time in getting going, makes 10 really quick easy metres there. Here's Sutcliffe. Coming in for work, calls of offside here from the East Stand, but not heeded by the officials. And Sutcliffe has come off second best on that challenge. Here's Salt and Stahl in midfield. Turns the tackle, thought, thinking about the offload, but keeps hold and does well, gets over halfway. O'Brien finds keys, brings on Kavanagh on the angle. Well put down there by Davies. And while Adam O'Brien runs down from dummy half. And he's six again as well. Great play from Adam O'Brien there. And Halifax has six tackles on this Vikings line. Here's Adam Tangata against his former club. And Adam Tangata on his 200th career appearance. Scores the try. That brings Halifax right back into this game. Reception he's getting as well, Adam Tangata. It's only Tangata's second try of the season, but what an important score that could be. In the context of this game, right by the side of the post. You're from the six again from Adam O'Brien shooting out from dummy half. Spying the witness. Markers work square. And in front of the play of the ball, Ryan Lannan charged on. Short ball to Tangata, who powered his way over for the try, which Louis Jufre converts. And what a seesaw game we've had so far in this first half just under eight minutes to go it's Halifax Panthers 12 Windus Vikings 14 and could goal kicking prove so important again in the context of this match Jufre 2 from 2 Dixon 1 from 3 as Owens gets his underway again Jufre this time collects on to Tangata, the try scorer, and he's getting up ahead of steam. He's playing with his tail up. Looking more like the old Adam Tangata. O'Brien shoots a dummy half, finds G. As Halifax picking up the pace in the last few minutes of this first half. Here's Lannan. Spy pulls his nose through. He does well, looking for a quick play of the ball as well. O'Brien shoots out again, finds keys. Onto Kavanagh, footwork at the line from Kavanagh, but he's put down. Looking for a quick play of the ball. Doesn't get it, referee said he was six and two threes. Keys runs across the line, onto Jufre, finds G, comes back inside. Goes pulling more room out, out wide. Last tackle here for Halifax. O'Brien finds Jufre, puts it high towards Dixon once more. Salt and Stall chasing and does well. The Salt and Stall puts him down right away despite the best efforts of the witness players to shepherd him out of the way. And this is better defence here from Halifax now, O'Brien leading the charge. Craven onto Owens, finds O'Brien once again. Since he's coming, it seems like he's tackled everything as Adam O'Brien. As witness try and play for the six again, but again, referee rules with a six one and a half, does with the other. He's having words. Cameron Worsley and Jack Owens like having a chat so far. As Ryan Ince comes in off his wing to make some yards this win the side, put down by Tangata. Here's a substitute. 
Tom Worthington. Number 32, no name on his back. Last tackle already for Witness Vikings as Craven. Pulls it really deep. Goes straight down the throat. Brandon Pickersgill does well. Bruno Field looking to counter attack, but thinks better of it. And just takes his tackle, but the Vikings defence pushing back a few metres. As we come up towards the last five minutes of this first half. And Witness the court offside. Halifax being piggybacked upfield by these penalties or six agains as Keys once more not really going for length from these kicks the touch Crooks taps and finds Tangata runs in field onto Jufri short ball to Lannan and Lannan great yards once again from Ryan Lannan Lannan and O'Brien and Tangata the three substitutes have changed this game since they've come on Here's more onto Jufre. Long ball out to G. In the right centre position, G takes on the defence. They're going to push him out there. Great defence there from Widness. And it's a rare mistake from Matty G. No real need to try and take him on out wide there. And the Widness defence push him out of touch. And they've done well because Halifax were definitely playing with the tails up here. And they'll get the scrum. Ten metres out from their own line, centre field, but they've stopped the try. Four minutes to go. Here in this crucial round 23 Bedford Championship clash. Halifax Panthers 12, Witness Vikings 14. Maybe a play the ball, sorry, ten metres out. Ince takes on the line. It's put down by three fast defenders in Moore, O'Brien again, and Lannan. Here's Grady. Runs further out wide, but the same result. Kavanagh and Sutcliffe this time, put him down. Here's Worthington. Stopped and thrown to the ground by Tangatar. Fozard jumps out of a dummy half, goes blind, throws a dummy, but great tackle down low by Sutcliffe. Quick play the ball though, and win this charge past halfway. Worthington just goes direct past the 40 metre line. Last tackle here for the Vikings. There's Gilmore. Pulls it high, looking for the chase of Owens, but Pickersgill. Safe as houses at the back. Getting some rough treatment from Matty Fleming on the floor there. Here's Walmsley. Throws a dummy. Nearly fooled the winner's defence, but. He goes past the 20 metre line. O'Brien finds Saltonstall. Thought about the pass, but thought better of it. Takes his tackle, just shy of 30. Two free in at dummy half. Finds Tangata, and Tangata runs into the teeth of Vikings defence and finds the floor on the 40 metre line. Quick play of the ball to O'Brien, finds Moore onto Keys. Short ball to Sutcliffe. Sutcliffe breaks through. He's still going out the back to Keys. High tackle, surely from the. Witness loose forward Aaron Brown and there's a penalty now will Halifax take the two to square this game up less than two minutes to go or will they chance their arm and go for the try Witness outscoring Halifax three tries to two at the moment and Halifax most likely from instruction from Simon Griggs playing the long game. Square this game up. Hopefully, square this game up. 14 points apiece at the break. 90 seconds left in this first half. It's unlikely that there'll be much action after this goal kick. Which Drew Frey is going to take as much time as he can with this and 25 metres out 5 metres outside the right hand post Jufre strikes it high 
Is it? Well, it is. The flags are up. Luigi Dufresne, 100% of the boot today. And after a nightmare first 10 minutes, it's rally fast where they went 8 0 down from two tries. Back and forth scoring. Halifax will probably go in at half time level 14 points apiece. I've witnessed. Got one more trick up the sleeve. Will they go for the short kickoff? No. Owens goes deep. Or deep ish. Jufre collecting his 10 metres. Tangata runs centre field. Great run there from Tangata. He's had a fantastic game since coming off the bench. 15 seconds to go. Keys looking for the run of Walsley. And he bounces perfect for that from Walsley. Walsley's away. He's going to take on Owens. He kicks through. Looking for the chase. Is he going to get there? No, he isn't. Great chase back from Ryan Ince. What a move there from Ifax. Probably an underutilised move, you could say, with the pace that Lachlan Walls has got. Nearly got there, but Ryan Ince scored three tries at one end and he saved the try at his own end there. What an eventful first half we've had. Nightmare start for Ifax. Ryan Ince scoring two really, well, carbon copy tries in the first 10 minutes. Crucially, neither converted by Kieran Dixon. Ben Crooks then claimed one back for Halifax, which Jufre converted. Then in scored yet another carbon copy try to make it a first half hat trick after 27 minutes. And then Adam Tangata on his 200th career appearance powered his way over to bring it back towards two points. And then just before the half time Uta, Louis Jufre kicks a penalty to square this game up at half time. Massive 40 minutes to come here at the Shade, this crucial round 23 Betfred Championship clash. At half time, it's Ifax Panthers 14, Witness Vikings 14. Good afternoon and welcome back to the second half of this vital Betfred Championship round 23 clash between the Ifax Panthers and Witness Vikings at the Shade. And we're all tied up at 14 points apiece after an eventful first half. A nightmare start for Halifax. Ryan Ince scoring a first half hat trick for the Vikings. But Halifax battle back. Try from Ben Crooks on his 200th career appearance. Adam Tangata claimed an important score. Jufre converted both and then slotted over. A penalty right on the half-time Uta to set up a, a grandstand second half. In a must-win game for Ifax in the second half as they attack the south stand. What effect can this crowd have on this game? As Joe Keyes gets us back underway. To the left hand side, collected by Ince. And on to Worthington, who bounces off a tackle, but he's put down just before the 20 metre line. Here's Grady. Runs straight at Ryan Lannan, and Lannan does well to put him down. Fozard finds Brown onto Davies, and Davies put down really well there by Matty G. Quick play of the ball there as Aaron Brown runs forward, but he's pushed back by great Halifax defence. G and Lannan it was, as Worthington charges in once more. He's tackled there by Moore, last tackle. The witness just shy of halfway, Gilmore just dinks it over the top and bounces, bounces backwards and Halifax are gonna get in there. It's gonna be a penalty early on for offside and that's another nightmare start for the Panthers. Now, will Witness take two? The signals come from the touchline, they're going to go for two straight away and Halifax just pressing the self-destruct button there, just didn't deal with the kick. 
he was guided where no one else was it bounced and it bounced and it kept on bouncing I think your Joe Keys who tried to dive on it but knocked it forward also it was like on Wormsley who tried to do it knocked it forward into Joe Keys who was in an offside position so it will give Kieran Dixon a chance to edge Widness in front as well as giving him a bit of confidence with the boot as well A nightmare start to both halves for Halifax. Here comes Dixon, just over 20 metres out. And he's pulled it wide, well. He didn't look confident at all. And Will Calcott on the sideline celebrating that like they've just scored. So the score remains 14 points apiece. But Witness will get the ball back from the 20 metre dropout. As Keys finds Ince, hands on to Worthing to the witness will start. They're set just shy of halfway. Big let off there for Ifax. But it's a quick play of the ball. And here's Ince. Score of the three witness tries so far. Here's Davies. Takes on the Ifax defence. But they do well. Here's Gilmore, out of the back to Craven, Craven, long ball out to Ince, here's things going forward. The referee, quite rightly, gives play on, it came off his leg. Witness plays in front of him, nearly diving, conceding a penalty, but they moved that the way and Ince, alive to the threat, just dived on the ball. Last tackle here for Witness, Gilmore, dinks it over once more, Walmsley rises, takes it really well under the pressure of Shane Grady and Matty Fleming. And Halifax, after three and a half minutes, will finally have the ball in their hands. Suckliffe plays the ball on the 10. Crooks goes back into the rug, but finds some space. Shows some great footwork against Grady. O'Brien jumps out from dummy half. Great run again from dummy half from O'Brien. Here's Walmsley from dummy half. Yet again, more pace injected. Into the acting half back position as Wormsley finds halfway. Last tackle here for Halifax. Wormsley eventually gets up to play the ball. Two free. Puts it really high, not deep. As Dixon claims the ball well. But good Halifax defence means he's tackled on the 20 metre line. Here's Joe Edge. As Halifax fans of that south stand. Drum get into him. Owens throws a dummy and steps for Adam O'Brien. Outstanding defensive effort so far. Fozard onto Davies and Davies gets pushed past by Brandon Moore. Great contact there from the hooker. Come loose forward. Here's Worthington from the short ball from Brown. Still makes yards despite the attention of Kavanagh and Lannan. Last tackle here for the Vikings. Gilmore just grubbers it towards the corner this time and Pickers Gill will just let that go. No, he won't. Oh, he will. He'll carry on, let it go. Will it go out onto dead? No, he won't. And Witness, have they scored? Ooh. Brandon Pickers Gill playing with fire there. Perfectly weighted kick from Tom Gilmore and Pickers Gill playing the trapeze act of the high wire act of picking up the ball and bringing it back into play or letting the ball go out for a seven tackle set he took the risk and it's not paid off as Halifax concede the goal line dropout which Keyes drills out finds Gilmore after one bounce hands on to Worthington will trundle it up to start the set for witness 25 metres out for the Halifax line still 14 points apiece here Brown hands on to Davies and Davies Great tackle down low by Tangatar. Finished off up top by G. Here's Gilmore. Shot out from G and Gilmore. Forward pass. But the referee is going to give a penalty here for a late shot, I think, is he? I'm not sure what he's got. Personally, I thought that was a forward pass. It certainly looked forward. 
Ryan Lannan shot out the line, putting pressure on Gilmore. It's definitely a forward pass, and it's not a late tackle. It is, it is a forward pass he's given. But Gilmore stayed down after that, and I'm not surprised, because Ryan Lannan, like an exit missile, picked him out and smashed him. And because of that, the forward pass was conceded. And the water's come on. Neither side. Wants to get a ball. He's giving a penalty. Well, ignore what I've just said for the last minute or so. I think that is the wrong decision. I don't think that was a late tackle whatsoever, but I'm not a referee. And the referee's giving it, and it's going to be a much simpler penalty attempt this time from Dixon. 20 metres out, straight in front of the post. He's one from four at the moment, it's Dixon. Still going through. It's an orthodox routine. This to put Witness into the lead. It's two from five. And Witness are slightly in front, 16 points to 14. Just over seven minutes gone here in the second half. A very, very harsh penalty given by the referee Cameron Worsley. which Dixon took as Keyes gets us back underway. Ryan Ince hands on to Worthington and Worthington met by Lannan. Held out by Tangata and he's put down just shy of the witness 20. They go blind with Grady, Grady tries to bush off a challenge of Sutcliffe but Sutcliffe hangs on down low. Keyes finishes off upstairs. Gilmore runs across the line. Great tackle there by Ben Crooks on Craven, held out there by Adam O'Brien. Wild from the quick play of the ball. Makes some good yards there for the Vikings. Another quick play of the ball, Fozar picks up one-handed from dummy half. Tries to set off edge on, on that left edge. But Ben Crooks and Matty G, along with Jew Frey, halt his progress. Last tackle here for Widness. On halfway, Craven puts boot to ball. I think all the Widness players are offside. Pickersgill takes, no danger in that, this time and Saltonstall from his pass takes his tackle on the 20 metre line, here's Pickersgill, thought about the pass but throws a dummy, that looks to be a bit on the high side from the witness player but referee rules it was on the shoulder, Warms it, throws a dummy and takes it into the witness defence who put him down, 35 metres out from his own line, O'Brien on to Zach McComb, who's fresh onto the field. Replace Brandon Moore. Here's Kavanagh, and Kavanagh makes yards here. Finds a 40, last tackle here for Fax. As Keyes pulls it high, looking for the chase of Wormsley, but it's going to be too deep for him. Oh, I think he's been called offside, back on Wormsley. But Gannon Tangata with a great chase. Puts in a great tackle there on Ince. As Owens looks to go wide early, but he's put down there. I think Zach McComb is going back to his utility forward role that is being used by Simon Griggs in a few matches on the air. And it's going to be a knock on by the Vikings. Meanwhile, as Kieran Dixon, well, he certainly served up rocks as Kieran Dixon instead of diamonds. Bad mistake at the play of the ball there from the winger. And a fantastic chance for Halifax to strike back to take the lead for the first time in this game. With this scrum 15 metres out from the line, centre field. And Halifax players are split two ways. Pickersgill standing behind the scrum. He's brought late. Here's Jufre 
Goes back to Pickens Gill, Pickens Gill runs at the line. Onto Wolsey, Wolsey going for the corner. That's sure, that's a shoulder charge out there. Now I don't think there was any attempt by the win this man to wrap his arms around the player. It's a great defensive effort, but in the laws of the game, surely that's got to be a penalty. Personally, I don't agree with it, but I did not see any attempt by that witness defender, I think it was Ryan Ince, to wrap his arms around the man. So, in the rules of the game as it stand now, that would be classed as a shoulder charge. But, it is a great defensive effort, desperate defensive effort, which gets Wigan the witness off the hook. Here's Fleming, looking for a quick play of the ball and gets it, McComb does well from Marker to run back, but Windus are marching upfield with relative ease here. They'll take the tackle on the 40. Here's Callum Field back onto the field. Brown hands it on to Davies and Davies takes on Tangata, brushes him off, but Ryan Lannan's there waiting for him. Last tackle here for Widness, just inside the Halifax half, Craven puts boot to ball again, puts it really high, Salt and Stall underneath this time, and takes it just inside the field of play and he'll run it back. Met really hard there by field. And that won't deter Salty from doing his job. Here's Crooks running back into the centre field, but great defence there from the Vikings, pushing back five metres. Here's Salt and Stall running across the field, looking to get some space, but he's running away from everyone, Salt and Stall. His Halifax are really struggling to get out of their own 20 metre zone here. Here's Crooks, brushes off the tackle. This is great Vikings defence so far. There's joy to be found if Halifax can spread it here. Keys out to Kavanagh, Kavanagh goes back inside. Turns in the tackle, but makes some decent yards as Ben Kavanagh. Last tackle here for Fax, just over the 40. Keys. Pulls it long, but it's going to go straight down the throat of Jack Owens, who looks, loves it. Centre field to Dixon. Dixon looking to counter attack. But met by Lannan and McComb, who push him back. Five metres. Adam O'Brien being called offside there, and he was. As Ryan Ince looking to make hay upfield. He's still going, Ryan Ince. Such a danger man, and he's still not held, Ryan Ince. He eventually put down Ben Kavanagh on halfway. They just can't handle Ryan Ince at the moment. Here's Owens. Put down by Tangatara and McComb on the 40. Gilmore drops it off to Davies and Davies takes on O'Brien. Tries to brush him off, but he's helped out by Matty G and Winness are inside Halifax's 30. Here's Brown onto Gilmore. Gilmore, short ball to Fleming, steps inside Keys, but he's helped out well there by Kavanagh. Last tackle here for Winness, the 15 metres out from the Halifax line. Craven, little dink. Well taken there by Crossbow, but Winness have got the ball and Winness are going to score. They have. And Winness stretch out the lead even further now. The kick wasn't dealt with by Ben Crooks or Dufresne. And it goes into the arms of Danny Craven. And the ex Halifax man gets what could be a vital score. 15 minutes into the second half, and Widness. A 20 points to 14 up with a kick to come. And Dixon with a relatively simple conversion to come.
just the side of the post, Dixon puts it high out of the stadium and through the post more importantly. Dixon, three from six. And Widnes regain their two score lead. And we're less than 25 minutes to go. It's Halifax Panthers 14, Widnes Vikings 22. Keyes gets us back underway. Collected by Ince. Thought about the pass, but he goes himself, and why not? He's had a great game so far as Ince, and he wins the penalty for his side as well. Ben Kavanagh with a high shot. And Halifax just piggybacking this witness side up the field at the moment. By mistakes, poor defence, or by this time, by penalties. As Jacob Fairbanks come back onto the field for Ryan Lannan, as Craven puts it up into touch, and they'll start the set. Ten meet, ten meters shy of the halfway. Here's Davies. He's put down by Tangatara and Fairbank. Brown. Oh, Matty G went in for the big hit and completely missed on the witness man there, but luckily. Zap McComb and Fairbank were there. Here's Brown onto Gilmore. Gilmore short to Grady. Good collision there from Kavanagh, helped out by Tangatar. Witness. Just shy of the Halifax 40. Brown keeps all this time, takes on Fairbank. And O'Brien makes some good yards. But he stopped. Just coming up to 25 metres from the Halifax line. They come this near side, Gilmore, back on the other side, sure that's gone forward with a freeze blue play on. Last sack away for Widnes, they've got men over on this near side, but Gilmore goes inside and Owens is away, Owens has scored! And Widnes has scored back-to-back -back tries! <laughs> 18 minutes into the second half. And Winness through Jack Owens off a brilliant inside ball from Tom Gilmore. A pull further away. 26-14 with a kick to come. Now this is a crucial conversion here for Kieran Dixon. The conversion would take Winness three scores ahead. And Halifax's defence just not have just not been good enough. I'm not sure why they've kept on with Dixon at the moment. They've got Gilmore and Craven who are and Jack Owens who are all accomplished goal kickers. But if Dixon slots this over, he'll be justified. Here he comes. And it goes straight through the post as well. Dixon has slotted it over when it matters. Four from seven he is. But more importantly, Witness open up a 14 point lead in the blink of an eye. A penalty and two converted tries in the second half have pulled Witness away. And IFAX are going short for this kickoff. Looking for Wormsley and he's, and he's found touch. Witness let the ball bounce. And if Halifax can strike back now, there might just be a chance. They'll get to play the ball. 30 metres out from the Witness line. McComb takes it close to the rook from O'Brien and makes some good yards there. Into the Vikings 20. Options left and right here for Halifax. O'Brien goes right to Dufrey. Dufrey steps back inside, but is well dealt with by Aaron Brown. The stats at left. Here's Fairbank. Out of the back to Keys. Keys onto Pickersgill. Pickersgill throws a dummy. The gap opened up a bit, but Grady closed the door. Still tackles here. O'Brien goes himself, throws a dummy. 
trying to ride his way over Adam O'Brien being pushed back Kavanagh finds keys there's men over here for the fact so they can use it Crook steps inside goes on the outside Ben Crooks onto Sonstall Sonstall's in what a try from the Ifax Panthers they do strike back brilliant centre play from Ben Crooks who's an outstanding game for the Panthers the Sonstall scored his 14th try of the season and it was Dixon who Crooks managed to step inside and out of the challenge of and release James Saltonstall who does what he does so well finishes off in that right corner and with 19 minutes to go Halifax pull one back Sixteen points to twenty-eight with a kick to come. Eighteen points to twenty-eight, my mistake. Can Jufre knock this over from the touchline? It's certainly high enough. It's on its way. It's over. What a kick from Louis Jufre. He's four from four today. And I said before, how important will goal kicking be in this game? Louis Jufre maintains his 100% record with the boot. And with 17 minutes to go, it's Halifax Panthers 20, Windus Vikings 28. Massive, massive quarter of an hour left in the context not just the game but of this season for Halifax Pickersgill takes a swirling kick off hands off to Tangata and Tangata runs it back well but the winner's defence pushing back Dufresne at dummy half long to keys Kavanagh steps back inside this winner's defence really sh shooting up and the Halifax attack struggling to make any kind of headway Fairbank just goes direct and makes some much needed yards slow play the ball O'Brien waits goes back this way Keys runs with the ball finds Walmsley Walmsley shut out there really his witness keeping him up and trying to push him towards touch but he does well O'Brien finds Dufray runs across field finds McComb McComb trying to step his way through the defence but the witness defence stands firm. Last tackle here for Halifax. Not even made 40 metres as Dufresne kicks long. Was that a late challenge? Well, if Gilmore's in the first half was deemed late, that's got to be late as well. Referee didn't give it this time. He won in the first half, he was in the second half. Here's Ince. Put down 35 metres out for his own line. Edge. Try to step out of the chance of a cone, but he's helped out by Gian Fairbank. Witness players complain about something. Nice nifty. Dummy half play there by the substitute Tom Forber. As Wild. 10 metres inside Halifax's half. Farmworth attracts three Halifax defenders who put him down on the 30. Last tackle here for Witness. They'll go by to, to Craven and Craven. Pulls it high. Great chase from Dixon coming up. And it's a brilliant take there, but by Pickers Gill and the referee rules a penalty. Dixon is an absolute nightmare today. It could be his conversion. That could win this game for, for, for Witness. Other than that, it's definitely been a rocks performance. Darren Tangata on his 200th career appearance gets a great evasion for the Leeds of Field brilliant game he's had as he's replaced by Will Calcott for the last quarter of an hour it's Calcott who takes his tackle just outside the 20 O'Brien finds McComb out of the back to Jufre. Jufre steps off his right but the winner's defence wise to it 
Here's McComb again. Out the back to Keyes. Bit of a slow pass. Here's Sutcliffe. Takes on Gilmore, but gets put down and halfway. Cause of an eye tackle, not heeded by the officials. Wormsley goes from dummy half. Spine trying to spy a gap in his winning defence. Surely that was a grab and tackle as well. Nothing by, given by the officials again. The ball's lost. It's another penalty to Halifax. Well, they're definitely winning the penalty count at Halifax. If they can score again, it'll set up an absolute grandstand finish. Keys kicks the touch. And Halifax will start the set off on the 20. Sutcliffe taps and finds Calcott onto Keys. Short to Fairbank. Fairbank will just take his tackle 15 metres out from the line, centre field. Options left and right here for Halifax, so Brian waits. He goes right and finds Dufray, steps inside, finds Pickersgill, bit of an hospital ball. As Owens was waiting for him there. Slow play of the ball from Jack Owens. Referee not happy with his O'Brien raced out. Well, if he's going to stop the game, give something. O'Brien finds keys, brings on Kevin on the angle. Bit too slow there, they were waiting for him there, the winner's defence. O'Brien waits a dummy half, the dumb, the drum beats, anticipating a score as Calcott goes close. O'Brien shimmies, throws a dummy. Can he go for a dummy half? Adam O'Brien, he's still going. And the penalty is given for an eye tackle. Now will Halifax go for two? to get within a score or will he keep this momentum going? Golden is ain't chance of going for two, O'Brien taps and goes. Finds Fairbank, short ball to McComb. McComb stopped by three winners defenders. O'Brien waits a dummy half, finds Jufre, short ball to G, G spins the tackle. Again, well dealt with by this winners defence. Great defensive effort he's been these last few minutes by the Vikings as G Stays down, he's gonna get on really slowly. Here's Dufre, runs across field, picks up the pace onto Keys and Keys. Great tackle there by Grady. Telegraph that play. G still down in backfield. Here's Calcott winding up, going towards the post, put down by four winners defenders. As G really struggling that backfield. Dufre runs towards the right side, Crooks steps and takes on the defenders. He's still going Ben Crooks. And Winness just about deal with him. And as he stayed in the field of play, he's got out in the touch. Now, when's a player held? Because it seems to be a long time from when his momentum was stopped. But the upshot is is that win has survived that defensive effort. Still just over 10 minutes left here in this game. Still plenty of time, but Winness will try and eke as much time possible here. Here's Ince. Put down by Calcott. Halifax shoots it up in defence, trying to restrict the yardage of this Winness side. They've just got to be careful that Cameron Wordsy don't catch them offside. As O'Brien shoots out, Owens rides the tackle well. Here's Farnworth, jewels with the ball, but McComb, big hit there in defence, held out by G. And Calcott, G looks to have shaken off whatever was bothering him before. Playing through the pain barrier. As Winness, last tackle, they get a quick play of the ball as well. Craven decides to run with the ball. Then he kicks towards the corner. And Salt and Stall will just let this ball go out. Great play there by Craven. He's bossed this game. And Salt and Stall runs towards the midfield to get a quick play of the ball in. Here's Crooks. Well dealt with there by the witness defence. 15 metres out from his own line. Here's Sutcliffe. Takes on Grady. Bumps him off, but there's two more witness defenders waiting for him. Who push him back slightly. 
but he'll play the ball 25 metres out from his own line. Here's Calcott, who'll trundle it open, Grib, run there from Calcott. Nice little half break, takes past the 40 metre line, gets a quick play of the ball to O'Brien, jumps out. Short ball to Kavanagh, looks a little bit forward, but the referee rules play on. Kavanagh gets the ball out, and O'Brien gets the ball and he puts it out. Tries to pass it on and Crave and intercept. Gilmore intercepts. There's two winners players down from that Mullican midfield. And I that's compounding mistakes after mistake there. Kavanagh offloader when the, the offload wasn't really on. It was a loose ball and O'Brien dived on the ball and then decided to offload himself. Went straight into the arms of Danny Craven. Of Tom Gilmore, sorry, who gleefully dived on it. As referee stops the clock. So the two witness players can get the treatment that they need. The clock stopped at nine minutes, 30 seconds. Alifaz Panthers 20, Witness Vikings 28. Delicately poised. Next score in this game, absolutely vital. If Halifax get it, it's game well and truly on. If Witness get it, they leave with the points and go above Halifax in the table. They'll swap places if that happens. But it's still a massive nine and a half minutes before that happens. It's Aaron Brown who's one of the, the, the players getting treatment, who's had a great game for the Vikings. And Shane Grady, another one, it's very rare you see Shane Grady stay down from any kind of tackle. Brown's been given the head, the head signal is going to go for a head injury assessment and I think Shane Grady is going to go the same way. And they both get a great ovation from the sea stand, Grady especially, especially after the, the few years service that he gave Halifax. They both, they both won't see the rest of this game. And after all that, Gilmore will play the ball five metres into the Halifax half. As Max Roberts gets his first touch of the ball straight onto the field. Here's Fleming, goes into midfield. Put down by Keyes and Fairbank. Here's Field, jumps out of the tackle, still going field. Eventually put down by Kavanagh. And shrugs Kavanagh off as well. Scruffy play the ball. And Tom Forber takes advantage. Last tackle here for Widness. Late movement in from Craven towards this near side. Gilmore onto Roberts himself. They're just going to take the tackle here, Widness. Don't think they miscounted. I just don't think they... They're not bothered about kicking the ball. They're just happy that they've turned the ball over. In Halifax's 10 metre zone. Wormsley plays his ball. Onto McComb, McComb with some good yards upfield, stands in the tackle and gets put down 25 metres out from the line. O'Brien well, waits a dummy half, onto Dufray, finds G. G pulls his nose through, but it's witness defence. Has been resolute all afternoon, put him down. Dufray runs across field, out of the back to Keys. Keys finds Pickersgill, Pickersgill short to a Stuckliffe, onto Walmsley, Walmsley steps in back inside and runs backwards. Away from the witness chasers, trying to spy a gap and gets it. He's away, Zachary Walsley. Great last ditch tackle there from Farnworth. He gets a quick play of the ball. Biggest kill, jumps in the dummy half. Keys throws a dummy. He gets put down. Last tackle here for Ifax, 15 metres out for the witness line. O'Brien fires it to Dufray. Dufray kicks towards the corner, looking for Crooks. Crooks takes it, throws it behind onto Dufray, which is a penalty to Halifax. Rule to be tackled in the air as Sutcliffe is injured in back play. Comes off the field to be replaced by Lannan. Seven and a half minutes to go. 
Still Halifax 20, Windus 28. This Halifax crowd doing their best to get this Halifax team up for this last one last push. Here's Keys onto Dufre, steps out of the challenge. He's still going to lose Dufre. Takes his tackle, gets a quick play of the ball. Oh, Brian's there, dummy half. Can he twist his way over? Has he got the ball down? No, he's just short. Desperate defence from the Vikings. Really slow play of the ball. Dufre, long ball out for Wormsley. Dummies, and he goes out, and that's poor play from Wormsley. That was never on. And has the chance gone? Six and a half minutes left. Halifax 20, Windus 28. Is there enough time for Halifax to score twice? Or is that the chance gone? Wormsley going for glory there, but great defence as it has been all afternoon by this Windus side. As Edge plays the ball just shy of the 24, but goes from dummy half where he's met by three high fast defenders in Lannan, Fairbank, and O'Brien. Craven finds Dixon. He's put down by Lannan and G. Here's Worthington. Worthington just trundles it up. Simple rubber for Winness. They don't need to push anything they've got that eight point cushion Gilmore runs across field and hands it on to Roberts and Roberts gets put down and halfway by Fairbank last tackle here for Widness he goes to Gilmore and Gilmore puts it high and deep Saltonstall rushes across to take it and does on the full looks to counter attack James Saltonstall bumps off a tackle of Farmworth he's still on his feet is Saltonstall eventually takes his tackle just outside his own 20 keys ways at dummy half and on to Wormsley. It's now or never for Halifax now. Just over five minutes to go. O'Brien goes blind to Crooks. Crooks pumps off the defender. Gets put down just past the 40. O'Brien fires it to Keyes. Keyes runs across field onto Jufre. Jufre out of the back to Pickersgill. Onto McComb. McComb pumps off a challenge of Dixon and McComb spies a gap in midfield. He's still going, Zach McComb. Great run there by Zach McComb. And Halifax are 35 metres out for the line. Jufre finds Pickersgill. And Pickersgill will get to the 20 for Halifax. Last sack here for the Panthers. Everyone on the ground knows what's coming. Keys kicks towards the corner looking for Walmsley. Walmsley rises up. That's a brilliant save from Ryan Ince. But it's a penalty for Halifax. The referee ruling that Walmsley was shepherded off the ball. And another chance here for Halifax. Four minutes to go. They need to score now. Crooks taps and fires it to Keys. Keys runs across field. Throws a dummy. Rob Keys. Drop Keys away. What a tackle from Jack Owens. O'Brien finds Jufre. Jufre runs across field. Out to Solenstall. Solenstall steps his side and he's going away. That's Solenstall with the ball over. No, yet more desperate defence from this witness side. Jufre from dummy half. Can he power his way over? No. That's one of his trademarks, Jufre, but he can't do it this time. Three and a half minutes left. Biggest Gill waits on dummy half. On to Gene and another penalty for Halifax. Halifax have dominated this penalty count. Jufre taps. Buys it to Keys. Keys. On to Lannan, Lannan, footwork at the line, gets put down, less than 10 metres out from the line. O'Brien waits, options left and right, they go right to Dufre, oh, so ball to McComb, McComb on the angle, runs across field, bumps off the tackles at McComb, on to Calco, the raw option, the gap's open up for Calco, Calco's still going, it's going to be another penalty to Halifax here, and it's going to be finally a sin bin in. long before time. I think it's Danny Craven who's been sent his sent to the sin bin for a late tackle persistent infringement and Ifax have the last 2 minutes and 42 seconds 
playing against 12 men. And Craven will eke all this time out to trundle towards the sideline. Sure, the referee's just made him go to the nearest touchline or dead ball line. The time's off, so it doesn't really matter. But it just gives his teammates an extra few seconds to get some oxygen in the lungs. Here we go, Dufre runs across field onto Calcott. Calcott gets put down. 10 metres out, centre field. Here's O'Brien onto Dufre. Goes towards that corner. Zach McCone, well dealt with there by Joe Edge. Still tackles on the board here for Halifax. Saltonstall goes from dummy half, runs across field. He's still going, James Saltonstall. As he runs behind his own man, no, the witness fans calling for it, but the referee don't give anything. O'Brien onto Keys, long ball out to Crooks. It goes forward, and there's a game gone as Gilmore picks the ball up. And that's the game. Two minutes to go. The chance has gone for Halifax. They'll fall to only the second home defeat of the season. And the Halifax crowd seen enough. They're making their way towards the exits. Great shot by Crooks there. There's Ben Crooks. Quite rightly gets announced as the man of the match. He's had a superb game. Dixon plays the ball on halfway. O'Brien, who's had another fantastic game for Halifax, puts him down. Forward goes for dummy half. Roberts takes his tackle. 10 metres into the Halifax half. Forward goes to dummy half. He'll go to Gilmore and Gilmore just grubber it towards Stusby. Hits the back of the Halifax man and Forber. This time will grubber it through and Pickers Gill takes it. A minute to go for Halifax. Pickers Gill looks to counter attack. He gets put down. Keys finds Dufre. One ball to McCone, nearly an interception there from Dixon, who ends up putting a really well timed tackle on Zach McComb. Here's G. Less than 36 seconds to go here. As the, is the witness fans that you'll be able to hear behind the post. Singing their boys to a victory. Pickersgill finds Crooks, Crooks. Great tackle there by Gilmore. Wormsley dummy half. He's not giving up yet. Little chip through from Wormsley. He's taken out. It's another penalty to Halifax, but it won't matter. He's just going to delay the inevitable. As the clock winds down to zero, the Hooter was going to go any second, but the clock stopped. Now, unless there's an eight point try in the offing, Halifax is going to fall to the feet. Keys sits through, Ince knocks the ball on, and Crooks has put the ball down. And Halifax will score on the Hooter for a much deserved second try for Ben Crooks. But it's still going to be a defeat. And all is going to happen is, is, is all what if. Players in the shake hands, but Luis Ufre will take this conversion for points difference or his own personal record, if anything. Well deserved try from Ben Crooks. He's had a fantastic game, named man of the match. But unfortunately, it's going to be in vain. As Halifax is going to fall just short, it's whether it's going to be four points short or two points short. From the conversion attempt to Louis Jufre. Will he maintain his 100% record with the boots? He will. Via the post, Louis Jufre is five from five. But I don't think that'll matter too much to him because unfortunately, Halifax have fallen 
tomorrow their second league defeat of the season here at the Shea. And with that, win this leapfrog the Panthers into seventh place, leaving Halifax in eighth place with four games to go. Four must win games. If today was a must win game, and the rest are game must win. Starting with one of the toughest away trips of the season to Whitehaven next weekend. But here today, a Ryan Insat trick, Danny Craven and Jack Owen score. Two bursts of scores have done Halifax in. In the first 10 minutes, then 27 minutes in that first half, and then two tries back to back in three minutes in the second half. Ben Crook scored twice for Halifax, Adam Tangatar on his 200th career appearance and James Saltonstall. Louis Jufre, five goals from five attempts. Unfortunately, Halifax just short. The final score here in this crucial Bedford Championship round 23, Clash of the Shea. Halifax Panthers 26, Windus Vikings 28.